Hi, my name is Bobby. I'm a bilingual Spanish youth librarian of the Multnomah County at the Kenton location. And today I'm going to read to you from a book that I love called Furia. And it is by Yamil Saeed Mendez. And before I begin, I just want to say that this is not my story. Um, it is not my lived experience, but I want to read it because I think it's so important to read other people's stories and experiences because that's the way we learn about other cultures. Um, so not trying to take this as my own, just wanting to share. And I'm just going to begin. Chapter one. Lies have short legs. I learned this proverb before I could speak. I never knew exactly where it came from. Maybe the saying followed my family across the Atlantic all the way to Rosario, the second largest city in Argentina, at the end of the world. My Russian great-grandmother, Isabel, embroidered it on a pillow after her first love broke her heart and married her sister. My Palestinian grandfather, Ahmed, whispered it to me every time my mom found his hidden stash of wine bottles. My Andalusian grandmother, Elena, repeated it like a mantra until her memories and regrets called her to the next life. Maybe it came from Matilda, the woman who chased freedom to Las Pampas all the way from Brazil. But of her, this black woman whose blood roared in my veins, we hardly ever spoke. Her last name got lost, but my grandma's grandma still showed up so many generations later in the way my brown hair curled, the shape of my nose, and my stubbornness. Ay, Dios mío, my stubbornness. Like her, if family folklore was to be trusted, I had never learned to shut up or do as I was told. But perhaps the word sprouted from this land that the conquistadores thought was encrusted with silver, the only inheritance I'd ever received from the indigenous branch of my family tree. In any case, when my mom said them to me as I was getting ready to leave the house that afternoon, I brushed her off. I'm not lying, I insisted, fighting with the tangled laces of my sneakers, real Nikes, that Pablo, my brother, had given me for Christmas after he got his first footballer paycheck. I told you, I'll be at Roxana's. My mom put down her sewing, a sequin skirt for a quinceanera, and stared at me. Be back by seven. The whole family will be over to celebrate the season opener. The whole family, as if... For all their talk of family unity, my parents were not speaking terms with any of their siblings or cousins. But my dad's friends and Bambo's girlfriend would be here eating and gossiping and laughing until who knew when. You know Pablo, Ma. I'm sure he has plans with the team. He specifically asked me to make pizzas, she said with a smirk. You know you have to be on time and don't do anything stupid. Stupid? Like what? My words came out too harsh. But I had stellar grades. I didn't do drugs. I didn't sleep around. Hell, I was 17 and not pregnant. Unlike every other woman in my family. You would have thought she'd give me some credit. Be on my side. But no. Nothing I did was enough. I was not enough. It's not like I can go to a gigante. I don't have money for a ticket. She flung the fabric aside. Mira, Camila. How many times have I told you that football stadiums no place for a decent senorita? That girl who turned up in a ditch, if she hadn't been hanging out with the wrong crowd, she'd still be alive. There was a little bit of truth in what she said, but just a little. That girl, Jimena Marquez, had gone missing after a game last year, but she had been killed by her boyfriend, El Paco. He and Pope Francisco shared a name, but El Paco was no saint. Everyone knew that just as everyone knew, he used every woman in his life as a punching bag, starting with his mother. If I pointed this out though, my mom would start ranting about the Ni Una Menos movement, how it was all feminist propaganda and I'd miss my bus. My championship game, the one my mom couldn't know about, was at four, the same time as Central's league opener. At least they were at opposite ends of the city. Yeha, I said, instantly regretting calling her old. She wasn't even 40 yet. We live in the 21st century in a free-ish country. If I wanted to go to the stadium, I could. You could too, mommy. Pablo would want to see you there. You know that, right? Her face hardened. The last time she'd been to the stadium, Central had lost, and my dad had joked that she'd been Dayeta. Bad luck. My mom was a no, never forgive, never forget kind of person and would remember his words until her last breath. Because what if he was right? What if she had been the reason Pablo's team had lost? 
throwing my last card, I let just enough of the truth spill out. I was going to Roxana's after my game to quench her fears. At Roxana's, I can hear what happens in the stadium, Mama. Just give me this, please. What am I supposed to do here all day? She tugged at a stubborn thread. It's Mama, Camila. Don't talk like a country girl. If my sister Graciela heard you speak like this, her eyes swept over me, up and down. And why are you wearing those baggy panty, huh? If you'd let me make you a few dresses, I almost laughed. If she was picking on how I talked and how I dressed, I'd won this battle. But then she said, You're hiding something, and it worries me. My heart softened. I'd been hiding that something for an entire year, since Coach Alicia had discovered Roxana and me playing in a night league and recruited us to her team. Pobre mamá. I wished I could share my secret with her, but in spite of what my parents believed, I had learned my lessons. When I was 12, my dad found me playing football in the neighborhood Potrero with a bunch of boys. I'd been having the time of my life until he started bellowing at me in front of the whole barrio that he wasn't raising a marimacho, that football was for men. I took it all in silence, ready to cry at my mom's feet, but she sided with him. I hadn't talked to her about football since. Ciao, ma. I pecked her cheek and dashed for the door and freedom. I'll tell Mrs. Fong you said hi. Answer your phone when I call you. My cheap phone was inside my backpack, safely out of credit. But she didn't know that. Ciao, te quiero. I threw her a kiss and ran out before she could stop me. I paused for half a second by the closed metal door of our apartment, but she didn't say te quiero back. The neighbor's music, mi gente, set a reggaeton rhythm for my pounding feet. I took every shortcut between the cinder block building and shacks in Siete de Septiembre, our barrio. By the time I made it to the bus stop, I couldn't hear the music anymore but the bum bum beat still resonated inside me. The 142 bus turned the corner just after I checked my watch. 2.40, you're on time. I gave the driver a grateful smile as I scanned my student card on the reader and when it beeped, I thanked La Virgencita. I couldn't really afford to spend money on the fare, but the game field in Parque Iregoyen was too far to walk. Well, you're lucky, the driver said. This is the emergency services bus for Central's opener. Most scoundrels are already at El Gigante, but I'm supporting from here. He smiled, showing me the blue and yellow jersey peeking out from under his worn blue button-up. You heading up there? I didn't want to give him an excuse to get too friendly, so I shrugged and found a seat. The shiny black leather was cracked with yellowish stuffing peeking out, but it was far en enough from both the middle-aged couple making out in the front, in the back, of and the man leering at me on the right. The bus gathered speed and left El Barrio. The drone of the engine and the warmth of the heater lulled me as I gazed out the window at the still naked August trees and the flocks of birds who hadn't made the flight north for warmer weather. After a brief stop on Circunvalacion, I felt something touch my leg, a card with a picture of La Difunta Correa, the patron saint of impossible things. The paper was yellowing and a corner was bent. I looked up to see the flash of a young boy's crooked smile as he walked the length of the bus giving out Estampita Saint cards, hoping for small donations. In spite of attending a Catholic school since third grade, I'd never been particularly religious, but I recognized La Difunta. The image of a dead mother still breastfeeding her baby in a beam of divine sunshine had always mesmerized me. Sometime during the chaotic post-colonial years in the mid-1800s, the army had taken La Difunta's husband to fatten up its ranks. Heartbroken, she carried their infant son and followed her husband through the sierras and the desert until she died of thirst. When two drovers found her body, her child was still alive, suckling from her breast. Ever since, miracles have been attributed to her. She isn't officially a saint, but shrines to La Difunta dot Argentina's roads, encircled by bottles of water, the offering and payment for her favors. My conscience reminded me of all my lies, of the miracle my team would need to win the championship today. The sadness in the boy's hunched shoulders pricked my heart. I rummaged in my pocket for some money. There wasn't much he could get with 50 pesos, but it was all I had. Gracias, he said. May la difunta bless you. I held up the estampita and asked, will this really work? He shrugged, but when he smiled, a dimple pocked his cheek. What can you lose, eh? He couldn't have been more than 10, but he was already old. No one else took an estampita or gave him money, and he sent me another smile before he stepped off the bus. The engine's roar couldn't drown out the frantic muttering in my head. Today might be the last day I played with my team. No legs would be fast enough to give us victory. We needed a miracle. 
I glanced down at the estampita and sent La Difunta a silent prayer for a future in which I could play football and be free. What could I lose, eh? Thank you for listening to me read you the first chapter. I hope that you continue reading Furia. Um, to do so, you can go to our website, mocolib.org, and you can put it on hold in book form, or you can get an audiobook version or an ebook version. And it's also available in Spanish.